Welcome everybody and today for the first time in a while I won't be talking about animators or Toriyama specifically but rather a follow up to a video I made early last year where I gave my thoughts on a series of illustrations done for Dragon Ball's 30th anniversary so these pictures aren't anything new but there were a bunch I never talked about partly because I didn't want the video to drag on forever and also because I wanted to highlight my favorites by like Marata, Kishimoto, Katsura there were some really great pieces and mainly I'm doing a follow-up because I just want to talk about something different for a change and I can put Dragon Ball in the title so the algorithm won't demote me. And as per usual, like in every video, the featured artist is Samuk425. A lot of cool stuff. I really like this piece in particular and the way he's detailed all the fur. Awesome work. So go give him a follow. Link to his account is in the description and follow the text on screen for your chance to possibly feature in a video. So let's jump in with quite an expressive piece that I wanted to touch on last time but didn't and that is by Kazuki Takahashi. Known for being the creator of Yu-Gi-Oh! and in terms of art style he has quite an angular touch with stylizing a lot of various elements like hair and clothing with quite pointy and triangular shapes. And it works rather well with adult Goku. And what my favorite part about this drawing is the gestures like with Goku here, but especially with the dragon, it's quite dynamic and interesting. And lastly, I like the gritty feel Goku has with all the multiple pen strokes for the shading. Just a really solid piece overall that gets your attention. And up next is a rather simple piece by Hirohiko Araki, which was honestly surprising because in the past when he's drawn characters for other series for tribute pieces, they were quite out there. So it's sort of a surprise he did this simple little kid Goku and honestly, I still like it. He looks quite cute. It's well drawn. I like all the hatching he does on the arms and pants. And the way he has approached Goku's hair is rather different to its usual depiction by both Toriyama himself, but also compared to a lot of other mangakas who have drawn Goku, where it's usually just black, or it has these sharp highlights with some pen strokes like seen before, but Araki instead shades out a larger part of his hair with multiple pen strokes and paints a small portion of black with some interesting shapes for the shading. So although small, it's cool to see some variation. But I guess one nitpick I have is the eyelashes. It's kind of odd to see on Kid Goku, but it's Araki, so I'm not really surprised. But overall, still cool. Next up, we have a rather cute Bulma piece by Naoshi Komi, best known for his series Nizukoi, and it has a really nice soft touch to the line work, as well as the lines themselves being quite thin, which complement the character rather well. The eyes are also very well drawn and detailed, just a great piece. And now we have this thing by Asamu Akimoto, who is a legend. He is known for writing and illustrating the story Kochi Kami, which has almost 2,000 chapters and was continuously published within Shonen Jump for over 40 years. So massive respect there. But regardless with this image, I don't particularly like it. I think it's just a massive monobrow and Master Roshi being a midget like Krillin. Although in fairness, within those early chapters, Roshi was quite short, so I'll let that pass. But yeah, kind of mixed, although I will mention that I like the simplicity to his style in how he stylizes like the clothing, for example, but that's sort of it. Now moving on to quite a clean piece of Gohan in his Great Saiyan outfit by Shuichi Aso, best known for series The Disastrous Life of Saiki K. What I like is the way in which he stylizes various features like the eyes and nose. It has some similarities to the way Toriyama stylizes them like the more boxy eyes for example. So it has a sense of being familiar while at the same time different and that's a recurring factor that I brought up in the original video. So yeah, it's really cool to see when a mangaka strikes a balance between his style but still carries over several elements from the original authors. Now next up is Toyotaro. I didn't intend to include him because he works officially on the series and this video is more so about other mangakas outside of the Dragon Ball series but since I was covering pretty much everyone who contributed to this tribute I felt it kind of incomplete if I didn't mention him. So firstly, the composition is rather unique where he has drawn the spine of the original volume releases of Dragon Ball, even using the same font for the lettering and taking inspiration from the layout in spreading Android 16, 18 and Goku across the spine of the book. He also includes a lot of characters which adds interest and from a technical standpoint, the characters are fairly well drawn. So overall, a really nice piece. End up next is a piece by Kawada, 
well known for Hinomaru Sumo and originally when I first saw this a while ago I didn't really go for it until when making this video and saw the full image and realized that it was actually Freezer in Sumo attire and he was about to challenge the main character from Kawada's series Hinomaru which is quite a creative idea and differentiates itself from many of the other tributes and from an artistic standpoint the lines carry a loose quality to them and all the shading out of the face gives Freezer a menacing look and in the back he added some further effects which further tie in with that atmosphere so a really cool piece and up next we have Mr. Satan drawn by Masanori Marita who is a phenomenal artist I actually only just discovered his work for the first time when making this video and it blew me away he is known for Roka Danaishi Blues and Rookies he was also an assistant for Tetsuhara and like Hara he has a more realistic and detailed approach to the stylization of characters and this one is no different and somewhat like before there is this rounded touch to this piece like with the fingers here just a really solid drawing then we have Yuto Sakuda, who is the writer of Food Wars. It's quite simple and is a redraw of an old Toriyama piece, so it's nothing overly original, but apparently he is not an artist by trade, and so the fact that he still decided to draw something anyway is really cool, and it's drawn fine. Now to the next one by Haruuchi Furodate, well known for the series Haikyuu. I quite like the top down perspective and how he has done multiple drawings of like Mr. Satan in the background with Boo and Big in there as well. It adds a bit of interest to the composition and all the variations of width within the line work I find quite appealing and adds depth, especially like with the smoke which has some really nice shapes as well. And while we're on the topic of Boo and Mr. Satan, Haruto Akizawa contributes a rather cute margin Boo with a very cheery expression. And I also like the bowl line work. Quite a simple piece, but still interesting. Then up next is Kaito, well known for cross manga and buddy strike. But if I'm being honest, it's a little underwhelming in terms of interest. It's basically a redraw of a panel with chibi proportions. And the thing is, he is an excellent artist. And although I'm not overly familiar with his work, from what I have seen, he can draw some interesting and forceful gestures along with great expressions and has an appealing art style. So yeah, I wouldn't say it's bad, but rather a little bland compared to what he can do. And moving on now to a buffed up Master Roshi by Yoshinori Nakai, known for illustrating Ultimate Muscle. Quite an appropriate choice of character for him, with a cool throwback as well to early Dragon Ball. And from a technical standpoint, you have some great bold line work with a rounded approach to anatomy, which synchronizes well with the art style during the time period we first saw this form. And finally, he has drawn a rather intense expression to him. Now getting close to the end here with Roy Nakama, known for a series with an overly long name that I'll mess up saying, so here it is on the screen. And I think it's cool how he decided to do first form cell. Personally, I quite like that form and you don't see it drawn all that often. But from a technical standpoint, the proportions aren't great and the pose is rather uninspiring. So there's nothing really that noteworthy about it. But again, at least he drew something a little different. Now to the next one. So um, with this one, it's by Yokota Takuma. And I was going through my old script for the first video and right at the bottom, I had about a sentence written on my thoughts about it, which never made it in that video. And what I said was, quote, Honestly, not a lot to say besides that it makes me feel uncomfortable and reminds me of the cursed Deborah from Z. And you know what? I still stand by those words and I still hate it. I've joked about Oda's Goku being cursed, but this is the real thing that scares me. It's like he's staring into me with those, those fruity eyes. But in seriousness, it's drawn well, I just can't bring myself to like it. And to end things off with Nahu Oishi, who like Toyotaro works officially on the series and I didn't intend to include, but as I said with him, it kind of felt incomplete by not discussing everyone. And she draws some great chibi Gokus at different ages and in his various forms. Each one is drawn well and looks quite appealing, reminding me somewhat of Toriyama's modern work, especially with there being hardly any variation in the line work and not tapering off in some areas. And finally, with all the variety of expressions, it gives a bit more interest than some of the ones I've gone over in this video. But with that, I'll conclude the video. Overall, my favorite from the selection I went over in this particular video would be the Bulma piece by Komi and the Goku with Shenron by Takahashi. And in terms of creativity, I'd probably give the award to Kawada and Toyotaro. Although if I was to look at all the tributes I discussed in both videos, I would probably still put it down to these five with Marata or Sirachi's Bardock being my personal favorite. They were just so good. But anyway, with that, hope you enjoyed something a little different if you're a regular watcher. I certainly enjoyed making it. And with that final note, I'll see you later.